After my video last week about the Resilient Cities Network, a lot of people asked me if it was the same as the Strong Cities Network, the SCN. And firstly, it's not the same network. So Sydney's not a part of the SCN. However, Melbourne is. Um, so Melbourne's a member of both the SCN and the RCN. So the SCN was officially launched in 2015. However, its parent company has been around since 2006. And we'll talk about them in a moment. So on the website, strongcitiesnetwork.org, they say that the Strong Cities Network is committed to working with communities and for communities to make stronger, safer, more united cities, towns and regions. This global network was set up to provide counter narrative tools to combat extremism. They say, we partner with city officials to establish local risk assessments and design action plans and programmatic responses from de-radicalization programming to youth engagement strategies. We ensure that local responses address local needs. And they say that since their formation, uh, they have delivered training to 5,000 practitioners, which is including police officers from all around the world. And uh, who are the founders of the SCN and who funds them? So the US Department of State initially funded the network. However, the SCN claimed that it is several governments and organizations of the world that voluntarily make contributions to fund the network. The SCN uh, website though, doesn't directly provide a list of those governments or organizations. So perhaps we'll find the answer to this when we look at who runs the SCN. So the answer to that is the ISD, the Institute for Strategic Dialogue and they are a London-based think tank and they say they're concerned with extremism. It was set up in 2006, as I mentioned before, and the Institute for Strategic Dialogue has conducted extensive research on the subject of far-right extremism in Europe for many years. Uh, they partner with governments and leaders of the technology sector, such as Google, and they also chair the EU's Radicalization Awareness Network, which is called RAN, R-A-N, and that's a working group on the internet and social media. And the ISD run other programs as well. So uh, that's with tech companies like Facebook under the umbrella of their online civil courage initiative. And that began in Germany in 2016. And then that expanded out to France and the UK in 2017. So you can read more about that on their website, isdglobal.org. And on there, you'll also see that their advisory and policy says, we formulate and advocate policy solutions and provide local authorities, central governments and multilateral institutions with the data, expertise and technical support to deliver evidence-based policy and programming. ISD has provided policy support and training to over 40 governments and 150 cities worldwide. We launched the Strong Cities Network at the UN General Assembly in 2015 as a part of our strategic support to the White House's countering violent extremism agenda. So we know that ISD partners with big tech companies and governments from around the world, and you can find that full list on their website, but who funds the ISD? That's the important question. So there are 15 foundations that fund it and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is actually at the top of that list. There's also the Open Society Foundations, which is founded and ran by George Soros and the Omidya Group, which um, whose founder is Pierre Omidya and he um, was the person who created eBay back in 1995. Uh, there are also eight corporations uh, that fund the ISD and the top four are Facebook, Google, YouTube, and Microsoft. So I'll leave it up to you to decide if this network is for our benefit or for the benefit of the new world order. And I'm sure that one would wonder if the ISD and their networks such as the SCN, um, you know, if they were so great, then why aren't we hearing about them on the mainstream media? Most people have never heard of the SCN or the ISD and why companies like Facebook and Google and, you know, YouTube and Microsoft are part of this network? Why are they so involved? Why are they giving away so much money towards it? Um, why do they say that they're combating right wing extremism and at the same time labeling those who are currently questioning, you know, 
the government's narrative or questioning you know the pandemic or questioning medical treatment um, or questioning their government's unconstitutional demands to take medical treatment why are they labeling them as white a right-wing extremists so why these same companies um, that are censoring free speech right now um, you know and people that are questioning the narrative why are these the same companies that are doing that to us